What's up guys, it's your boy Tolkien here, also known as Flo, and since it's my first tutorial on this new channel, um, I'm going to start off with something basic and something simple for people who want to transition into graphic design or certain types of Photoshop work. Now, what we're going to be working on today is different layer styles for logos or even backgrounds if you want to use so. So, what I've got here is uh, a simple background, that I, uh, a simple logo that I made. Um, if you do want me to make a logo, logo tutorial, just simply comment below and tell me what you request for a next tutorial. Um, but today it's going to be working from this. So, on this layer, all I've got is uh, just a nice clean background. If you want to know how to get this colour, you want to go to colour overlay, use your background layer, and then you just want to drag all the way across and down almost to a black, but you get this nice grey, darkish feel to it. And you want to get your logo layer or image layer whatever layer you have and first of all I'm going to show you to create these type of effects or whatever you want to call it so what you're going to do is I'll just delete this one um, you're going to make a new layer which is above your logo you're going to click on the pen tool um, I'm using the graphics tablet at the moment so it will be much easier for me but I don't see the problem in using a trackpad or a mouse in any other case so I'm going to find the middle of this logo which is roughly about here and then just come down a little bit and I want to click my first point about uh, say here now you want to go literally uh, adjacent to this and then click and hold and drag it into the middle so you get this nice sort of curve effect you can go like full horizontal or whatever but I'm just going to go for a nice sort of curve type logo um, colour so what I'm going to do is going to drag this and click all the way around and once you've made your mask, which is what I call what it's called, you want to right click, go to make selection, ignore this, just leave it as zero pixels and anti-analyze and click OK. Now what you want to do is you want to get the fill tool and the first colour on your colour reel here is the main colour of what you'll be putting on. So say I want to use a red for instance, we'll just go ahead and change to that. And you want to click inside this selected area and click which will allow it to fill in whatever you've just selected um, to get rid of this bounding box what I do is I usually click on this selection tool here just double click outside of it and there you go now you might be thinking oh this just looks terrible now because you've just got this massive um, shape layer above it so what you want to do is you want to right click and um, scroll on here and you'll find create clipping mask now what Create Clipping Mask is, do, do, sorry, it creates a uh, layer which only affects the layer which, is a clip, which it's clipped to. So say you had a different layer here, it'd be clipped to that and it doesn't affect the rest of the layers. So if you feel like it's a bit too high, you can always drag it down and you still get a nice curve effect. So I'm going to drag it down to about here, shall we say. Um, if you can see in my logo, let me find it for you. I have a, a sort of uh, black um, line part in it, which makes it look like uh, if you can see, I'll show you what I mean. it makes it look as if uh, it's separated, so it looks like a fracture object. But um, the re easiest way to do this, you want to click effects, go to stroke, and it'll just put this nice little black line amongst it. It depends how big you want it. I'm going to leave mine about three pixels is the best, I think. Three or five between them is uh, roughly you know a good uh, example of how to use it um, now that is one way of making a logo look pretty nice by having contrasted two colors uh, you can choose but you don't have to have white but white always works best with most colors you can have red blue green yellow orange anything you want but um, that's one way of making your logo a bit more efficient and a bit more uh, complex than it actually is um, now what you can do is you can actually add effects to the whole layer itself to make it look a bit more fancy, shall we say. So I've already got a preset of some here. Now, this is just really basic tools, but as you can see, it makes it so effective. It adds like a diffusion to the whole layer, which makes it look more professional. Now, um, all I've done here, if we go into my effects and go to gradient, what I've done here is... Uh, clicked on the gradient tool and just lowered the opacity because if you can see here it just makes it from a white to a black now what I've done is I've just lowered this down to about mm, say 15% yep 
but 15% that's about right as you can see it just gives you makes it darker and lighter at some parts um, it just creates a nice contrast between the colours and it doesn't make them just pure colour which is quite um, boring if you're trying to do other stuff for backgrounds and logos now um, as you can see if we zoom in here you see these lines now um, you can download this uh, preset from online online places if you just um, google diagonal lines for photoshop and it's a pattern so what you want to do is you want to go to effects pattern overlay and once you've done that you want to click on pattern and I've got a bunch of them here you can choose between them all but for this I usually use this diagonal sort of line and it gives it this nice, I don't know if you're able to see it but it gives this nice sort of effect for um, your logo or background you can even use it on backgrounds to try to do a lot <coughs> Excuse me, um, but that gives it that nice contrast between colours and it makes it a bit more complex but also simple at the same time just by adding that little features that make your logo or background the better. So, if we look closely here, you can see this like sort of shadow which makes it look more 3D when it's just a 2D image. All that is is a drop shadow. Now, with drop shadows, you gotta be careful because you can overdo it and you don't really want to mess it up that much as you can see here. You can make it really big or whatever. But what I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to put it down to about, hmm, let's say, say about 5 pixels. Yeah, seven or five, 5 to 7 looks good. Uh, the angle you can mess about with, it's just the angle at which it sh um, comes down at, as this one is 120. Uh, opacity, put it about 75 or 50 between them ranges, because you put it all the way up. It gives it, I think, gives it too much of a, a, a dark effect around the layer. So I'm just going to put it down to about 75. Now, the spread is how like um, large it is. So as you can see here, it does become a bit weird. It does actually look like it's a shape layer instead of a shadow. So you want to put that down to quite low. Um, size is just how big it spreads really. So if you look here, it gives it a contrast between the whole of it instead of just the outside of the layer. So. That's basically uh, a quick tutorial on how to keep the flow and how to improve your logo. I know it's not the best tutorial and it will get better when I get a new computer, I'll be doing a lot more. But this was requested by a few people, but if you have any more requests, just comment below and I'll be happy to help. Um, it's been Flow, I hope this helped you. Peace guys, see you later.